Brian um, from the Newport Storm Dist Brewery and Thomas Two Rum Distillery. And what I'm going to talk to you a little bit about today is uh, Frank did a great job talking about craft spirits, so I don't I need to promote those anymore. Um, what I'm going to talk about is uh, our business and how it's kind of morphed uh, as it relates to tourism. Um, you know, when we started uh, back in 1999, uh, it was myself and some friends from college. Uh, we scraped together a little bit of money and built a brewery in uh, two garage bays in an industrial park. So not exactly, uh, you know, this palatial and inviting environment for people to visit us in. Uh, we were the first microbrewery in Rhode Island, um, and we're actually the only packaging brewery uh, in the state until 2012. So. Um, as it relates to the beer industry, Rhode Island is a little bit behind some of the other areas. Um, and so uh, we kind of had to pioneer stuff on our own um, quite frequently as it related to uh, the beer and rum um, you know, businesses uh, that we were developing. Uh, in 2006, we started the distillery, uh, making a single barrel rum called Thomas II. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Newport, Rhode Island was the rum capital of the world uh, 250 years ago. The most and best rum was being made here. And so we wanted to bring back that tradition um, to its roots down in Newport, Rhode Island, um, where we have our facility. But as it relates to um, you know, what we're talking about today, uh, the biggest step we made was in 2010. Um, and prior to that, uh, the only time we had visitors at our facility is when we could shut down production and put everything away. Um, and that would allow it to be a safe environment for people to be in and quite frankly have enough space for them to be in in there. And so that was once a week on Fridays at 6 p.m. So for about two hours, we had guests over to our facility uh, to check out what we did. And what we found is that there were a lot of people who wanted to um, visit us and we didn't even have enough room for those people. So, you know, by the end, you know, it would be the middle of February in this parking lot in Newport, Rhode Island and there'd be snow coming down, it'd be freezing cold, and we'd have literally hundreds of people outside our door waiting to get in, and unfortunately, we could only let 75 of them in, so we had a lot of disappointed folks uh, who wouldn't get in. So um, after years and years of searching, um, we found a new site to build a new facility, not only to expand our production, but also really to um, start to tackle this um, you know, this opportunity of having guests uh, visit us. So um, this is a, a slide of um, right after we finished building uh, our visitor center. Uh, and basically, um, you know, when we built our new facility, we knew we needed more space to brew and distill rum in, but um, we also really needed to carve out a space to invite the public to, um, because we recognized that you know, Newport is a place that gets two million visitors a year, um, and a lot of uh, those visitors are looking for places like breweries and, and distilleries to visit. So um, we actually went on, uh, myself and my business partner, we went on a tour of New England breweries and distilleries. We visited around 12 of them. Um, and what we found was really interesting. We found a lot of guys that had kind of, you know, focused just on the production part of what they were doing. Uh, so they didn't have a lot of um, attention to the visitor experience. And then we had um, folks like Oma Gang over in Cooperstown, New York, um, and uh, places like um, uh, Smutty Nose up in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, that had really robust visitor centers um, with, a, with a true focus on inviting the public in. And, and, we, and we found that there was a little bit of correlation between the areas that these places were in and what they were doing. If you were in a more touristy area like Cooperstown, obviously there was an incentive to um, you know, provide more services like that as opposed to somewhere in the middle of nowhere. But I think in all cases, um, you know, we noticed even breweries in rural areas, you know, the, there were still some that recognized the value of having uh, these visitors. And so um, when we built our space, we specifically carved out um, almost 10% uh, of our building to receive guests. And so um, when, when we received them, the idea was that now we want to do it on their terms, not on our terms. So instead of having um, you know, a small window on Fridays, the idea was that we would be open seven days a week um, and actually morphed to six days a week, um, but we're open every weekend. And so um, with this in mind, we needed to really 
recognize how we need to set our place up. Um, you know, we don't have um, a space that's safe for everyone to be in all the time. We have production going on. So we need to really think about what are we doing in our space to invite these tourists into what we do. And so we built our visitor center. Um, you see there's a nice window there where people who are at our uh, tasting counter can actually see inside um, our space. And then the biggest thing we did was um, build this tour deck. So uh, these are a bunch of folks up on the tour deck there having a good time, having beers. Um, and we've actually, this is right when we opened up, so we've since put a timeline all on that back wall there um, so that people can kind of walk through our history. But what they're looking out on there is all of our production space. So they can, you know, smell, hear, um, you know, and really feel the production environment in both the distillery and the brewery. Um, this is actually an idea that I got from one of my friends who runs a brewery up in Vermont, Magic Hat Brewing Company, or used to run it. Uh, and, you know, he uh, cited a, an incident where, you know, he had some folks on the production floor and one of them decided to just grab a valve and open it up and pour 60,000 gallons of beer on the ground, uh, which is obviously not good from that standpoint, but also it's quite dangerous when 60,000 gallons of beer just comes rushing out of a tank. So, uh, so he, had built, he had built something elevated, recognizing that there's still, you know, it's really still important for people to, you know, touch and see what you do and learn about what you do, but we, you have to think about your facility in a way that, you know, accommodates them. You know, you know we went from having, you know, tourism be almost a nuisance to us because we weren't able to receive them to really, you know, proactively inviting these folks into our place. And like I said, we all have about 15,000 people come through there um, this year. So, you know, for us, a big part of setting up our facility and this new space that we built in 2010 was making sure that we could receive visitors and we can, like I said, receive them on, on their terms. So, um, you know, what we do with this is we tell our story. So, you know, we are, we're four college guys that got together and started this brewery uh, back in 99, you know, and over the years have made, you know, you know, 60, 70 different beers. Um, we've got this great single barrel rum. And so everything about our environment, you know, as it relates to the visitors is about telling our story. And I think that's something um, for those of you that are looking to get into the, the food business as, a, as somebody who's a producer, you know, um, that's going to be hosting tourists. Uh, that's something you want to keep in mind. Um, you know, we have the ability, uh, you know, as the owner operator of these facilities, whether it's a restaurant, whether it's a winery, a brewery or what have you. Um, to control that environment for the guest. And, you know, tourists are, are looking for a different experience than, you know, regulars. Uh, and about 90% of the people who come through our facility are tourists in the area. And so you have to recognize that they're not as used to um, certain customs and things like that that you might have in, a, in a, an environment where you have a lot of regulars. So setting up your facility to make it really easy for them um, to see what you do and learn about what you do is key. Not only do we give guided tours at our facility, but we also give self-guided tours, um, or they give themselves self-guided tours. And that was, again, a big part of the setting up of our facility, the idea that you know we have this tour deck, they can go up there unsupervised, uh, they don't need a guide, and we've got this nice timeline to, for them to walk through what we do. So again, it's on their time. So if, if 1 p.m. on Wednesday works best for them, they can come by and get that experience. We don't have to, you know, pigeonhole a bunch of people into a set of, you know, seven times throughout the week that they're the only time they're going to be able to see our place and learn about what we do. You know, so we offer that guided experience, but we're also acknowledging the fact that, you know, the tourists aren't working on our schedule, we're working on theirs. And so by building a facility in a in a structure that allows folks to come by on their time, it really makes for a a great overall experience, um, you know, throughout the year uh, for the people who are coming by. And for us, it's really valuable because those are the people who are going to be spreading the word about what we do, not only to get more visitors, but, you know, to drive the wholesale end of our business where we're distributing our beer, you know, in four different states. We have our rum in 13 different states. And so those folks a lot of times can go back to those areas, you know, and find our stuff and be able to tell our story about what we do. So... I want to thank you guys for the time, and uh, we'll see you out there.